Faith on Film, a program designed to keep you aware and informed on everything that's happening in the world of faith and family entertainment. I am here by myself today. Holly McClure is not going to be able to join me, at least not for this first part, because she's extremely busy right now uh, producing a show uh, for Capernaum Studios. Remember we mentioned how they, uh, she now is working with Capernaum Studios? Well, she got so busy that she just said, I cannot join you for this first part, which always makes me nervous because uh, I rely on her quite a bit on this, but I will do my best. Now, today I have a very interesting guest. You all know how much I love Christian films. Um, and I, I'm very passionate about it. Um, but recently I saw a documentary uh, done by this filmmaker that just really shed light on, uh, how am I going to put this, the, the issues, the problems with Christian filmmaking. Not that we're talking negative about them, but just, well, you'll get, you'll get to hear from him and he'll tell you all about uh, Christian filmmaking. Uh, uh, let me just give you a little idea of who he is. Tyler Smith is a film critic and sought-after public speaker. He has spoken extensively about this unique intersection of film, uh, film and faith. He's a consultant with a master's degree in cinema and media studies from UCLA. He has his own podcast, one called Battleship Pretension, and the other more than one lesson in which he discusses films from, from a Christian perspective. He also has produced a documentary, as I just mentioned, called Real Redemption, The Rise of Christian Cinema, an engaging look at the cross-section of faith and art. Now, before I bring him on, um, I'd like for you to take a quick look here at the trailer, and then we'll come back and talk. The story of the church's relationship with Hollywood is long, complicated, and even a little melodramatic. This is my church! The Bible, of course, is terrific, but... For millions of people, pictures will be their reference point for the story. While faith is a difficult concept to nail down visually, the impact of faith is not. I want to compare faith to running in a race. It's hard. To show God is to limit him. So when depicting God, a filmmaker has his work cut out for him. Yes, why do we have to have evil? Ah. I think it's something to do with free will. The intersection of faith and film is more active, more aggressive, and more alive than ever before. Why now? Hmm. Welcome to Faith on Film, Tyler. How are you doing? Oh, thank you for having me. I haven't watched that trailer in a while. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, invariably when you make something, you can't help but uh think about like oh the things you would do differently and uh <clears throat> and i recorded that voiceover in in a bit of a rush and i realize now when i listen back to it it's like boy it sounds a little bit too official i wish that i could redo it and make it sound a little bit more uh conversational but that's just kind of the way things go sometimes well, you know? i i totally agree with you uh whenever i i never watch these shows that i do because i know that if i watch oh, them boy. i'm just gonna go oh my goodness what did i do what did i say you know so i i really don't um but listen um again the documentary to me just was a very uh, uh comprehensive look at um at faith faith filmmaking i guess and uh you didn't knock it but you certainly showed a little bit or, or talked a little bit about what are some of the elements that maybe are missing or some of the elements that are not quite done in in the way that uh, maybe could be a lot more effective uh but before we even get into all that uh, i'd like for you to share with us a little bit about you and how you even got started in this oh boy okay so i'm gonna try and and sum it up as much uh -huh. as possible um so i uh, my background is in film criticism i uh I went to film school in Chicago many years ago, came to Los Angeles to pursue screenwriting. Uh, and as I was kind of sort of working on that, I started this podcast called Battleship Pretension that I co-host with a good friend um, and started writing reviews and all that. And very quickly, that became more um, fulfilling than, than screenwriting, which is kind of a strange thing. And then uh, in 2008, I specifically remember I, I, August of 2008, in fact, I remember sort of feeling God pulling me towards actual, like, professional full-time criticism. And I remember being very resistant to that uh, for, for very prideful reasons. But eventually I kind of <laughs> gave in 
and and uh, the doors were kind of flung open. And I got I, I had a sense of like what a film critic can be, mm-hmm. especially because 2008 fireproof came out that year mm-hmm. and that really launched a lot of things in the film yes. in the Christian film industry. Correct. And being somebody who is a Christian, but also really loves movie movies and is not necessarily afraid of, of certain kinds of movies. I felt like maybe I had something to add to the conversation. Um, but yeah, so, so I, I did that for a while and then I actually went back to school in 2016 and got my master's degree, uh, because as a function of my criticism, I was, I was, uh, talking at, at colleges and really enjoyed it. And so I got my master's and, and, became a college professor working at a few a few different schools and it was really as a function of that and the fact that I had a free summer in 2019 that I, I pitched real redemption to a, a a streaming service called Faith Life TV and said like you know there's Christian film is not really taken seriously by academia and by critics and for the most part I know why and it's because it's it's not very good uh and not very effective um but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't approach it right as art and and really delve into it and see what it's trying to do what it could potentially do better and the impact that it's having on filmmaking at large mm-hmm. and so that's why i made real redemption um and and i'm fairly proud of it it's certainly it's only like 85 minutes i think and in that time i i try to go through the entirety of film history and how it relates mm-hmm. to the church so obviously i i i'm compressing some time and that sort of thing but uh but for the most part i'm i'm fairly proud of it and the film was officially released in 2020 and even you know even since then there have been developments uh in in the christian film industry so it's it's still the it's still a very a very live conversation it's not like the 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 case is closed on christian filmmaking it's still evolving it's still finding itself and and i i hope that this documentary played some role in a trying to get christians to take film more seriously as an art form and then also to get academics and film critics to take christian film more seriously even if it's not very good you can still learn plenty from a bad movie um and so that's kind of my my view um and you said earlier like we're not here to knock christian film Mm -hmm. i've spent a good portion of my life knocking christian film pretty heavily uh and i didn't want to do that with the documentary i wanted it to be like i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna say that it's that these movies are great some of them are almost unwatchable but i still want to take them seriously the the filmmakers are no less sincere than the directors of non-christian films and so i want to try and and take them at their word it doesn't mean blindly saying these movies are great but it means at least trying to engage with the films on their own terms yeah and you know i again when i saw the documentary i I learned a lot from it but i did see that you weren't knocking it just because you didn't like them you were really it was almost like an iron sharpens iron type of attitude you know here's what's missing yeah that's oh go ahead yeah was that was that kind of your your idea your purpose for doing the documentary yeah that's absolutely that's that's sort of my view about criticism in general um i i quote uh the the french director jean-luc godard in the film uh, where he says uh, the best way to criticize a movie is to make another movie, and that the way I've always seen that quote, it's it's essentially the the cinematic version of iron sharpening iron. The idea of like, if you see something wrong with film in general, or if there is a movie that is doing something poorly, um, there's there. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, hey, that could have been done better. Even if you're not a filmmaker, there's a lot of people that say. It's like, oh, critics, it's easy for you to say this stuff. You never have to make a movie. It is easy for us to say this stuff. Um, But at the same time, I think it's possible to say it and try to be constructive about it. Uh, And then the flip side is if you're a filmmaker and if you're in sort of a a new industry like Christian film, which I guess isn't that new anymore, but, uh, you know, it's always changing and it's always evolving. And so it is this idea of, of, oh, this movie over here uh, is maybe representing Christianity in a way I don't particularly like, or maybe it's not being totally honest about 
uh, a person's faith journey. So you know what? I'm going to make a movie that does do that. And so it's constant film in general, but also uh, any genre is constantly in a state of ev evolution and, and self-correction. You know, some of the films that have, to me, really uh, planted a deep Christian message have not even been Christian movies. I, I think of movies. Oh, yes. I, th I think of movies uh, like Shawshank Redemption, uh, Les Mis. I mean, Les Mis oh, yeah. almost got me saved all over again. <laughs> mm. um, you know, and, and what is the, what would you say is the difference between some of those movies that Hollywood makes uh, versus the, that they make that kind of have that redemptive value versus some of the Christian movies um, that have a great message, but somehow there's no real depth there. Well, I think I think the problem is that a lot of Christian film is made as a reaction. It's a reaction to Hollywood. It's a reaction to whether they, you know, attitudes coming out of Hollywood or content coming out of Hollywood and people saying like, well, that's not what we want. We want something else. And anytime a filmmaker makes a movie that first thinks in terms of what it doesn't want to be, then it's 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 starting from a place of limitation. You know, uh, it's like, oh, I want to make a movie about uh, the depravity of humanity, but I'm not going to I'm not going to use any profanity. I'm not going to use any sexuality, but I'm still going to try and do it. It's like, well, you're going to do it poorly then, you know? And so I do think that some of these, some of the filmmakers that we're talking about, you know, Martin Scorsese actively uh, incorporates uh, very frank and very honest depictions of faith into his movies, even in ways that you might not expect. Uh, and I think that there's an, uh, there is an honesty there because he's willing to go wherever the story takes him. And I think a lot of Christian filmmakers are not willing to go where the story takes them because sometimes it might take them into uh, a story element that they're not comfortable going. And so they will stop themselves. And this, the, the viewer can, can feel it. They can feel when the director is not following their instincts, when they're not following the instincts of the characters, mm -hmm. and they're saying, the, the director is saying to the story, no, you will not go here, even if, the, even if it makes complete artistic sense for the film to go there. And so I do think that that's, that's a big problem. My, I, I've said in the past in other interviews that my big problem with Christian filmmaking is dishonesty. And I don't think people mm -hmm. understand, I don't think they think they're being dishonest, and I, and I don't think they're actively lying. It's more just this idea of like, you know, you look at the Bible, it is, it is, you know, understandably very honest about the nature of humanity. Yeah. It is a very fallen, very broken nature. And even those who, who follow God, I mean, David yeah. was called a man after God's own heart and look what he wound up doing right. even, even after being called that. If, and that is, you know, that is something that we as Christians have to deal with that like sort of our heroes of the Bible are very broken. Now, I find tremendous comfort in that because when it comes right down to it, nobody's perfect except Christ. Mm -hmm. And so why make heroes out of these people? They are simply figures that, that were trying to follow God and, and, and they fall short just as we all do. That to me is very exciting. But I think there's a lot of Christian filmmakers who don't want to do that. It's like, well, I'm telling a story of, a, of someone who's trying to follow Jesus. So I might, I might incorporate some level of doubt or some very, very small obstacles, e not obstacles that are easy to navigate. Um, and then we'll get to the end and, and they'll be happier. They'll be closer to God. It's like, yeah, but it didn't cost them anything. They really, their journey was not difficult uh, as opposed to, I mean, this may sound strange. I would love to see a movie about somebody struggling, like a Christian struggling with sex addiction or struggling with like pornography addiction. How many people does that apply to? And we don't talk about it. And because it would mean very frank discussions in the film, uh, I imagine Christian, a Christian filmmaker would never touch it. Meanwhile, it's an issue that, that touches on millions of people uh, uh, around the world and certainly in this country and not just in the non-Christian world. And so, you know, that's what I mean when I say like these films could be doing much better, but they are they're starting from a place of this is what I can't do. And they're not thinking in terms of this is what I should do. Now, I tend to sometimes fault the, the viewer, the 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 uh, the public that would watch these movies because sure. they complain about Christian movies. Oh, they're, you know, they're so uh, non-dimensional. They're, they're just, they're flat. They're, they're, they're not realistic. Yeah. 
But then when somebody does produce a movie, a Christian movie, uh, that does get a little, that you know does go beyond the envelope a little bit, crosses the line a tad, then they don't support yeah. it because they say, oh, that's not a Christian movie. So I, I can understand how a producer of Christian movies uh, is a little gun shy of maybe creating a movie that is more realistic, more edgy, more like you're talking about honest. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of blame to go around, uh, as is the case, you know, anytime. And that's not just with with Christian film, but mm -hmm. movies in general. Anytime there's a trend um, that is maybe troubling in some capacity or or, you know, a, a genre of movies are being developed is being developed that is just mm -hmm. uh, of questionable quality, not necessarily moral quality, but uh, but uh, artistic quality. You know, the studios are doing what the audience tells them to do. The audience is going to see it, but then there's also this idea of, of sometimes audiences, they go see stuff because it's the only stuff available. So somewhere, so everyone kind of shares the blame when it comes to mediocre filmmaking. And what it really takes is a filmmaker willing to take risks, a studio willing to take risks on that filmmaker and to heavily publicize the film, and then an audience uh, willing to take a risk on a movie that they might not be comfortable with. But of course, that's a, there are a lot of steps there, and I, I don't think we're there quite yet. But eventually, everybody involved is going to be like, you know what, uh, we need more. And eventually, I don't know where it's going to come from. I don't know if it's going to start with the audience, if it's going to start with filmmakers. But eventually, someone's going to start the ball rolling, and everyone will be like, yeah, they, this, these need to be better. Yeah, and obviously, to me, Christian filmmaking is very, very important because... While in your documentary, by the way, you showed how Hollywood films used to have some good moral messages, but now they've mm -hmm. just gone completely to the other side, if you will. And uh, and so I feel like unless somebody starts to starts to create the the you know the type of movie, the type of content that at least brings us back to to the more moral side of of, uh, of our culture, uh, we're just we're going to be lost. So uh, so I consider Christian filmmaking very very important. Now you talk about risk. I have a friend that recently took a pretty big risk, uh, and uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the movie Redeeming Love. I think that's what it's called, right? Uh, yes, I, I'm familiar. I haven't seen it, but I'm familiar with it. Oh, I would highly recommend you see it. Now that was a huge okay. risk. It's literally a Bible story. I mean, it's a story of Hosea. Yeah, that, okay. That's, D, that's uh, DJ Caruso that directed that, right? I, you know what? I'm not sure, but I know. Uh, the, I think the, so. The now producer. I don't recall. Um, and it it was it was out there. It was pretty edgy. I mean, if you read if you read the story in the Bible, it that's exactly what it is. But to see it in a movie, it seemed like it made people very uncomfortable. And a lot of the Christian leadership just really came out against it. I went to see it. I went to see it with my wife. Um, yeah, yeah, it was definitely you know uh, pushing the envelope quite a bit, but when when uh when the movie was over and we you know I, I go to the bathroom my wife goes to the bathroom and she heard some ladies talking a bunch of ladies that had gone to see it and they just felt like that really touched them to see the the uh the, first of all the the love of this that this man had for this lady that was a prostitute and that just treated him so badly for yeah. a while uh but yet you know um he just felt that god had told him that was that was a uh, that was who he had to to uh, marry and be very you know very faithful to her um, so again, that's what I'm saying that here, the Christian leadership really came against it and, and probably still do. And yet it was somebody taking a risk, uh, to do just, you know, what you said, to make a movie that's a lot more realistic and a lot more honest about the, you know, the struggles that maybe this, this lady, this woman had. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I, I do think that a lot of it comes down to just maybe a larger issue. I do. There is this attitude that film is only about entertainment and if it's only and there's nothing wrong with entertaining film by the way but if film is only about entertainment then the only thing that matters is is it doing what i the viewer want there's no real room for challenging there's no real room for uh something that could be a little bit complex and require you the viewer to do some to do some of the work to figure out what the, what a film is actually saying it's entirely possible that a film could be presenting its story a certain way but just through some basic filmmaking and narrative cues you get a sense oh it's actually saying the exact opposite of what it would seem to be saying movies like pulp fiction the wolf of wall street movies that are very violent very profane they've got some sexuality in them and it would seem to glorify these things but there are moments and there are bits of dialogue that suggest that the director is actually doing the exact opposite um 
and so but that requires some level of literacy in, in, when it comes to film and the language of film and it also means that you have to you can't just sit back and let the movie happen to you you have to engage with the film and i think increasingly you have people who who aren't willing to do that uh and certainly you know a lot of a lot of um christian moviegoers are li- are are more uh conservative i am also conservative uh but as a function of that there's this feeling of hey i'm paying my money and when mm-hmm. i pay my money for something i want to get what i paid for and this movie i'm paying to see something that tells me i'm right i'm paying uh, for something to affirm my beliefs, not challenge them in 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 any capacity, uh, and so if something actually does challenge, not even necessarily your beliefs, but your your idea of what a Christian film should be, you, there's this feeling of like this must be a bad movie because I paid for one thing and it gave me something else, uh, and I do think that that is that's and again this is not to bash mm-hmm. uh, conservatives or Christians. I am a conservative Christian, but I do think we need to start thinking about art in a different way, not purely in a consumerist kind of way. It's not merely a product. It is a conversation between the the, the filmmaker and the viewer. And it, unless we start thinking of it that way, uh, then anything that's even vaguely challenging, like Redeeming Love, is going to just be com- almost completely put to the side because, well, that's not what we want. It's like, well, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe it is what you want, but you don't know it because you're not willing to look at it from right. a certain angle. Right. And... Uh, <clears throat> You know, uh, what would you say to filmmakers, uh, you know, should, should they right. take the risk? Yeah, I mean, it's always going to be a risk. You can you can put you can put everything you you have emotionally and artistically into a film, making the best possible film that you can. And the audience rejects it like there's really and if it does, then it makes it that much harder to make the next one. So you do have incentive to play it safe, um, but that's not going to do anybody any good if they do see it and so there's a lot of advice that i can give one is and this is the advice i'd give to any filmmaker is just inundate yourself with movies you don't necessarily have to take a bunch of film courses but just watch thousands of movies you know uh starting from the beginning all the way through to the present day because there are a lot of great filmmakers that never went to film school and yet they churn out original astonishing films and it's just because they speak the language of film that's that's the thing that i often talk about is like you know if you go to another country you might and you try to have sort of a a general sense of of what people are saying and and the language they speak but really if you speak if you are in that country for a year that will do more for you than any uh any course you could possibly take and so what i'd say is like immersion like immerse yourself in film and filmmaking Mm -hmm. and then maybe try to figure out why certain movies work for you and why certain movies don't uh and i think just instinctively you become a better filmmaker uh if you because eventually you just start thinking cinematically so that's the first uh bit of advice i'd give and the second is certainly from a screenwriting standpoint uh there's i shoot it might have been ernest hemingway who said uh write drunk and edit sober and the idea here being do write when you're writing your first draft put everything on the table even stuff that you yourself would find uh, hor- uh, horrible like oh my gosh i i don't approve of this behavior well if it feels organic to the character in the moment mm. just put it on, just put it all out there you can cut it back if you want in fact i would recommend it but put it all out there first you'd be sh- you'd be shocked what you what will work as opposed to again this idea of even in the first draft like uh okay i see the story heading this way but i can't do that so let's let's artificially steer it this other direction so yeah just put everything out there a lot of it is just immerse yourself in the story you're telling immerse yourself in in movie watching um Mm -hmm. start talking surround yourself not all the time but surround yourself with movie people uh people whose comments about a film can actually help you to understand the film better even if you don't agree with them uh it really a lot of these are very basic and very fundamental and yet based on people that i've talked to at at like the international christian film festival where you and i go uh somewhat regularly um i always have a little table there selling my book and hawking my wares and all that sort of thing and people always come up and and i talk with them and and 
the, like I said, these these bits of, of advice are very simple, very basic. Mm -hmm. But the reason that I'm I'm saying them is because a lot of Christian filmmakers aren't doing them, uh, and yet they still want to make movies. They understand how how engaging film can be, either as a ministry tool or just as an artistic property, uh, and yet they're not willing to actually engage with the film that's actually there. Once you do that, it, it will immediately change the way you, you make movies. Wow. So how can people watch this documentary? So this film is available on a couple of different streaming services. Mm -hmm. uh, I would recommend, uh, there's one called Rediscover Television, uh, and the reason that I recommend that one is because that uh, I have a second documentary, which is called um, Valley of the Shadow, the, the Spiritual Value of Horror. And that is also available on Rediscover. So you can see Real Redemption and Valley of the Shadow on uh, Rediscover Television, along with a 20 minute little documentary that I did about Jurassic World and how there's a lot more going on in that movie than you might uh. think. Um, and then I also briefly had a movie review show on there. So uh, if you enjoy me, uh, then check out Rediscover Television because I'm all over that place. Rediscover Television. All right. Mm -hmm. And then if people want to follow you, uh, where if they want to write you, where would they uh, where would they do that? Uh, you can. Uh, I'd say you can get me through my my podcast, More Than One Lesson, which unfortunately okay. that podcast I don't update very much. Uh, I have. Uh, twin two-year-old boys and once that happened something had to get pushed to the side yes. and unfortunately it was going to have to be that one because my my other podcast battleship pretension uh is just more popular and requires more of me and it brings in money uh more than one lesson was only ever a uh, sort of a, a labor of love so that i haven't updated that since march but i do still the website's still available the podcast is still available okay. uh and you can email me through that tyler at more than one uh you can follow me on twitter at more lessons so uh so yeah that's that's probably where people can get me fantastic well i appreciate you taking the time i know that you've been really busy uh you teach i believe right i do i teach and even though it's it's currently the summer uh i'm teaching as part of this weird program where uh high school students from europe come into los angeles learn about oh. film and then in the evening they go take tours of different parts of the city and stuff so that's well. that's what i'm doing at the moment well, thank you for taking the time to be with Plus, us. Plus, there's those two-year-olds. They, uh, they take up a lot of my time. Of course. Now, folks, I did promise you that we would come back with Holly giving a review on a movie from Hollywood. But you know what, Tyler? Uh, you were just way too interesting. I, I took the entire show. Uh, we'll, oh. we'll, have Holly, we'll have Holly on the next one give us a review. It was a movie that just came out uh, called Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. And apparently, it's okay for Christians to watch that movie. It's, it's safe. <laughs> so anyway, I uh, just want to remind you folks that you can write us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. And you can follow us, of course, on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. And don't forget, you can check out a lot of our uh, previous programs by going to YouTube and looking for Faith on Film TV. You'll be able to watch I have over 100 and, I don't know, 120 shows there or something. So, uh, Tyler, again, thank you. Thank you so much. This is, this is a lot of fun. Terrific, folks. We'll see you next week.